find out why this is my new favorite Amtrak train. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom and I am standing at the beautiful Glendale station here in Glendale, California, not too far from Los Angeles. Uh, this station is beautiful. I think it's an old Southern Pacific building. It's definitely worth checking out if you're in the area. Now, obviously I'm in the area. I'm in California with Lindsay on this trip, but she has something with friends today. So I have the afternoon and evening to myself. And I thought to myself, what could I do in Glendale? You could take the Pacific Surfliner, but doesn't the Pacific Surfliner run between Los Angeles and San Diego? And isn't part of that route suspended because of coastal erosion? No, there's also a northern section that runs from Los Angeles to San Luis Obispo. You could take it to Santa Barbara and get back to Glendale in plenty of time. Hey, now there's an idea. So today we are riding the Pacific Surfliner. Now this is definitely crossing off an item off my bucket list. Um, what is the Pacific Surfliner? It's a service between San Diego and San Luis Obispo. It's one of the three trains that the state of California contracts Amtrak to run. Um, and it uses a very unique train consist. So each train is primarily made up of Surfliner cars. Uh, which you can really only see here in California. So I'm very excited about that. The more famous side of the route is definitely the section between Los Angeles and San Diego. However, when I was filming this video, part of that line was out of service due to coastal erosion. That's why today I'll be riding from Glendale to Santa Barbara to show you that this northern leg of the Surfliner deserves just as much recognition. We're gonna see some great scenery today. After arriving in Santa Barbara, I'm gonna take the train straight back to Glendale. I paid $30.45 for a one-way ticket to Santa Barbara for a distance of 87 miles or 115 kilometers. It takes two and a half hours to complete that distance, which is not great by any standards. But in this case, the slow speeds aren't always the worst thing ever. So first, let's take a closer look at Glendale Station. The station itself is served by five different bus lines operated by Glendale B Line. No LA Metro buses stop here directly, though there are four routes with stops very close to the station. Greyhound buses do use this terminal as their Glendale Station. And finally, Glendale serves as a stop for Amtrak Thruway Bus Route 1 to Bakersfield. On the train side of things, Glendale is served by the Metrolink Antelope Valley Line and the Ventura County Line. Previously, Amtrak's Coast Starlight to Seattle made a stop here as well, but that was discontinued in 2005. Wow, 
look at this interior. This 2 plus 1 layout is in coach by the way. As with most American trains, boarding is done on the lower level. I'm more of an upper level guy myself. Up here, it's a 2 plus 2 layout, like coach class on other Amtrak car types. Still, these seats look like thrones. Let's find an empty one on the left side, that is, the west side. I think you might already be able to guess why I chose this side. Thanks for the info, Mr. Cafe Guy. We'll definitely stop by later. But for now, the most important part, the seat review. If you've been on the Surfliner before, you may not recognize these seats. That's because this car we're on is slightly newer than the other Surfliner cars. You can tell by the livery on the outside, which matches the livery of the cars used in Northern California. And by these seats, which look a little different as well. I'm going to sit in a regular Surfliner seat later, so make sure to watch all the way to the end for those seat reviews. There's a decent amount of space between your knees and the table, so you won't be launching your drink anywhere. A quick arm wrestle with the armrest, and that thing is down too. And now the recline. Controlled by this little knob, the back leans back a little bit, but mostly your butt cushion slides forward. Since these cars have two doors per side, there are also two staircases in each car. These feel very open and I actually like them better than the cramped staircases on Superliner cars. Bicycle storage is available in some cars too on the bottom floor. Now let's talk about stops. The Pacific Surfliner is an intercity service and it may be the American train that comes closest to intercity trains in European countries like the Netherlands. It serves as a long distance train, but it also serves commuters within a metropolitan area. Yes, the Surfliner runs from San Diego to San Luis Obispo, but zoom into the map and you'll notice that the section between LA and Ventura is practically the entire Metrolink Ventura County line. The Surfliner and Metrolink here have a special relationship. Since the Ventura County line doesn't run very frequently, the Surfliner supplements Metrolink services. There are two types. Code share trains stop at all intermediate stops. Anybody with a valid Metrolink pass or ticket can use the Surfliner on this section as if it's just a Metrolink train. Talk about an upgrade. Then there's the rail to rail trains. These skip the stations of downtown Burbank and Northridge and anyone with a Metrolink ticket or pass can ride these between Union Station and Hollywood Burbank Airport However, only Metrolink monthly pass holders may take these Surfliners between any two stations on the line. Our train today, number 777, is one of the code share trains, so we will be stopping at every station we come across. We pass Hollywood Burbank Airport, right where our line splits off from the Metrolink Antelope Valley line. I have a trip report from this beautiful line coming soon, so be sure to subscribe to Trains Are Awesome so you don't miss that. When I'm making these travels, I sometimes post on the Trains Are Awesome Instagram, so follow us on there too. Feeling extra obsessed? Check out our Patreon! These must be those views the Surfliner is famous for, right? They have to be, what could be prettier than this? I guess that could be a secondary function of the accessible platform, 
Seems like a good way to need it in the future. On the edges of Los Angeles County, the landscape becomes very agrarian. See those mountains? We're about to get up close and personal with them. Before Simi Valley Station, the views outside turn into this breathtaking rocky landscape. It never ceases to amaze me how Los Angeles is just surrounded by such a huge variety of beautiful nature. I was so impressed by this part of the trip that two days later I came back here to go for a hike in Rocky Peak Park. And this isn't even the most famous view of the train either, but we'll have to travel a little farther to see that. The Santa Susana Tunnel takes us from Los Angeles County into Ventura County. Our first stop on this side of the mountains is Simi Valley. Now, it had recently rained very hard in California, resulting in trees falling on the tracks and other damages. At this time, crews were still doing checks and maintenance on parts of the line. As a result, the southbound train had gotten a little delayed, and so we had to wait for it to pass. I was a little worried at first, I did not want to miss the views that were coming up next. This part of Ventura County is a farming community. It's known for growing many different kinds of citrus fruits. What could be better than rolling past vineyards on a train in the evening light? I did not want to miss the views that were coming up next, and the sun was beginning to set. This is Oxnard, the largest city in Ventura County. It's a stop on the Coast Starlight. Our next stop will be Ventura Downtown. While we're down here, let's take another look at the interior of these cars. As you can see, there's a lot of luggage space if you can't already fit everything by your seat. All this space truly is a benefit of train travel. So now I've walked into the one car behind mine, which is an older Surfliner car. As you can see, the seats are different. I'll review them in just a moment, but first I want to walk all the way to the back. This part is blocked off, and that's because this is the cab car. When traveling in the opposite direction, the engineer can sit here and control the locomotive, which will then push the train instead of pulling it. This lets Amtrak turn the train around a lot faster. Mm -hmm. 
So these are the classic Surfliner seats. Comfort wise, they feel pretty much about the same. The biggest difference is the tables. Rather than being held back by a pin, these have a more elaborate sliding structure. You have to pull it up first and then it folds out. Otherwise, a slightly different footrest and recline mechanism. This is the last farmland we'll see tonight. Those palm trees in the distance are telling us we're about to be treated to the best views of the entire journey. The reason I sat on the left side and the namesake of the Pacific Surfliner. May I introduce to you the Pacific Ocean. Does this view seem a little obstructed to you? Well then, How's this? Remember, I shot this in early January. Where you see the sunset will of course depend on the time of year as well as the delay of the train. Wow, that was more than worth the 30 bucks I paid for this trip. Now that it's all dark out, let's stretch our legs again and check out the entire train. Let's test the toilet. It's very spacious and aesthetically looks just like other Amtrak bathrooms. I'm just happy it was clean.
walk from one car to the next, you have to go back upstairs since the Surfliner cars connect at the top floor. This time, we'll walk towards the front of the train. What I like about Amtrak gangway doors is that you can open them with your feet. This is great if the hand button grosses you out or if you're holding a bunch of food or whatever. Speaking of food, this is the cafe car. The Pacific Surfliner has no diner since it's not an overnight service. The interior layout of the cafe looks pretty similar to other Amtrak trains. There are some booths with the vending area located behind it. The menu was fairly similar too but with a few extra items that I've never seen on the regular trains before. I found the best food I've ever had from an Amtrak cafe here, and I'll show you what it was right after I finish my walk. The other staircase in the cafe car was blocked off. Now this car has a toilet on the top floor, something I've also never seen before on Amtrak. Going up one more car, we enter an Amtrak Superliner. These cars are used on long distance services and some Midwestern trains, and there's often one in a Pacific Surfliner consist. I love Superliners, but as somebody who doesn't live in California, if I'm going to ride the Pacific Surfliner, I'm gonna ride in the Surfliner car. I got this cheeseburger and this Asian noodle salad, something I've never seen on any other Amtrak train. It was so good. These noodles are my new favorite thing to get on Amtrak. There are so many vegetables in them and the sauce is kind of spicy. Amtrak, you need to add this to all your cafes. Okay, we're crawling towards Santa Barbara. It's the next stop. Um, I have to take a train back to Glendale tonight, the 794, which is running with a little bit of a delay as well. Made it to Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara Station has a nice little building with a ticket office and a shop selling railroad souvenirs. The station has some cool old Southern Pacific cars on display, and it doubles as the bus station for Amtrak Thruway and Greyhound. The platforms are at ground level, but there is an accessible elevated platform, with this weird path behind it.
All right, made it to the beautiful station of Santa Barbara, California. At least in the dark, it looks beautiful. How was my Pacific Surfliner experience? Guys, I had no idea the views were gonna be that amazing. I was, I was anticipating nice views for the Pacific Ocean, but also like over by Simi Valley and stuff, that was gorgeous. Totally worth the $30.45. The trains were very comfortable. The Surfliner cars might actually be some of my favorite Amtrak cars now that I've been on them. Now here at Santa Barbara, I have about 20 minutes before I catch the 794 back down to Glendale. Uh, it's been a great trip. Thank you so much for coming along. I love making these trip reports and the fact that there are people that are willing to watch them blows my mind. If you are one of those people, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome and we'll see you next time. The Surfliner continues to follow the Pacific Coast north, and so I think I've only just scratched the surface when it comes to ocean views. I guess I'll just have to come back again.